Welcome back, uh, back and uh, with us live over the phone is His Excellency Ambassador Ayman Musharrafa, assistant, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good morning, Your Excellency. Well, good morning. Uh, please. Good morning to the audience. Uh, thank you so much and uh, a good day to you. Uh, would you please uh, would like to shed light over the history and formation of BRICS um, entity, the bloc? Uh, well, uh, we start uh, by saying the history of the BRICS. Uh, the right. history of the BRICS started in 2006 during um, a meeting on the sideline of the United Nations uh, between the foreign minister of China, Russia, and the uh, in Brazil, um, and after that, I started the idea of forming the BRICS, mm. and the first summit was 2009. And what stands for BRICS? The words come from where? It stands with the initial capital of every country member. B stands for Brazil, R for Russia, C for China, and yes. South Africa have joined mm. the, uh, and the uh, I for India, uh, I beg your pardon, and South Africa have joined uh, the BRICS 2010. Uh, South Africa stands for that. So the group was named BRICS after the name, the initial of uh, the, the five country member. And uh, mm, since then, um, they held meetings, yearly summits, uh, more around more than 14 summits. It has stopped briefly uh, during only the COVID area till uh, they reached the historical summit of Johannesburg this year, which they take a major decision to enlarge the group and to invite six more countries uh, to this very important group which represent around 25% of the world population and 40% of the world size. And the six countries are Egypt, Ethiopia, from the African continent, and plus uh, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates, representing the Middle East and the Arab world and Asia, plus Iran, of course, plus uh, finally, Argentina uh, from uh, South America, which, I mean, a comprehensive representation of the whole world. Of course, uh, this wave of enlargement was not an easy process. The decision came after a very treacherous and marathon meeting uh, to put the criteria and to change the, and to choose the candidates among uh, 23 files have been presented uh, to the summit uh, asking for the membership of the group. I mean, um, but this decision was uh, a historical one because it enlarged the group and it put him on maybe uh, the first scale of the world grouping economy in a few years after the G7. For instance, I, I would give you an example Yes. Uh, with the uh, accession of Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates on, uh, on, uh, and Iran, the group uh, right now represents 38% of the oil exports and 45% of the oil proven reserves in the world. So it becomes a major player in uh, the world energy, especially the oil and gas, and a major player in OPEC, the most important uh, oil grouping in the world. Right. So, uh, selecting Egypt or inviting Egypt uh, to be an active member as of January 1st of the year 2024, uh, like you kindly mentioned. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, of course, this is uh, in its own right as an appreciation. Uh, a clear appreciation of Egypt's leading role inside the region. And um, uh, that would qualify Egypt for many opportunities uh, and um, uh, advantages to come, if we may say. Uh, definitely, Egypt uh, was a brilliant choice because Egypt 
has a political weight in the African continent and in the Middle East mm. and has uh, a geographical um, position which uh, always, like Dr. Gamal Hindan said, they the upgrade in Makan, that means the, uh, the, the master of the place. Mm. Egypt is between uh, the link and the bridge between Africa and Asia. So, I mean, its uh, ge geopolitical importance is, uh, is instrumental. And Egypt is a big market, too, of 105 million. So, I mean, it is very important for enlarging trade for the group. Plus, uh, the wisdom of Egypt leadership uh, during uh, different crises and the role of Egypt in international institutions and regional institutions would give definitely the group um, a more prestigious and more stress. Uh, right. Let me recall President Abdel Fattah Sisi saying after that uh, that uh, we value the trust bestowed upon us by all member states of the bloc uh, with whom we share robust ties and we look forward to uh, fruitful collaboration uh, of course with them in the coming period as well as with other invited countries. Talk to us about the expected uh, or open venues for opportunities and uh, uh, partnerships and uh, chances uh, for Egypt uh, to explore uh, as of January 1st of the year 2024 and for the coming five years. Uh, of course, Egypt will have plenty of the world, of, uh, of, uh, plenty of opportunities uh, by joining the group. Uh, the group only is not just summit. Yearly, they convene more than 130 venues, which represent uh, the most important prestigious decision maker in energy, in trade, in artificial technology, mm. in um, industry, in uh, new and renewable energy, and even in uh, global warming and all issues uh, related uh, to the global warming uh, challenges. Egypt, of course, with, uh, with, is a member of the NPD, National Development Bank, um, which is a subsidiary of the, uh, of the BRICS, which was founded in 2014 after the Fortaleza Summit, with $100 billion as a capital. So Egypt will uh, be uh, will, will qualify as uh, a, a country which could take loan with concessional rates uh, to help and to uh, all the uh, infrastructure uh, projects in Egypt and all the development aspirations and uh, definitely Egypt would uh, benefit too from the trade facilitating the, uh, the trade between Egypt and uh, other uh, BRICS members. Uh, I think that the trade between Egypt and the BRICS member amounts of $30 billion. So if a part of it is paid in local currency, it will ease definitely the pressure on uh, the U.S. dollars. And it would uh, help and will facilitate the intra-trade uh, between uh, the member states, and uh, it will be a bridge of um, trade between uh, the member of BRICS in Africa and in Asia and elsewhere. And especially Egypt, we have the Suez Canal, and Suez Canal is the most important artery in the world navigation. So it will be a springboard and uh, a bridge to facilitate the trade, which, I mean, um, it was the main target of the founding, uh, uh, of the founding father of the BRICS, is to facilitate the trade and to create more fair trade terms. Right. So, uh, in other words, how would this have its uh, direct impact over uh, the boosting economy and boosting uh, the um, uh, investment inside Egypt and uh, uh, the different partnerships 
uh, on many fronts, not only economic, probably, uh, probably on environmental projects, housing projects, uh, uh, industrial, agriculture. Uh, how is that going to change the map uh, of development in Egypt? Uh, actually, uh, we are already partner with China and Russia and India in right. uh, several uh, in uh, projects, and especially the Chinese investments amount uh, to a very very important and sizable investment in Egypt among the biggest investors. Uh, so I mean, we have big projects like uh, the Suez Canal uh, economic area and all the free zones that we have created. So Egypt could be um, a, an area which would attract definitely um, the BRICS investment. And uh, Egypt will definitely present some concessional um, tax in taxes and other benefits uh, which will attract the Chinese or the Russian or the Indian investor which Egypt for them is a very, very attractive uh, place due to the size of the internal market, due to the geographical position, as I said, and due to Egypt possess uh, a very skilled and relatively cheap labor. And Egypt, too, is uh, very near to the European market, which could, be, uh, could present a bridge not only to the African and the Asian market, but to the European markets too. Um, we could have too easy access, as I said, uh, to loans with concessional prices, and it will ease the pressure of uh, the Brighton Woods institution, which were mono monopolizing um, the loans and the economic uh, and putting the rules of the new, of the old world order after 1945, the, the Second World War, which was the main cause of the, this order was the World Bank and the IMF, uh, which is not it's, uh, giving concessional loans with very hard conditions and uh, even sometimes putting uh, programs of re economic restructuring, which is very harsh and very difficult to implement. Right. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, or ask you about challenges and uh, hurdles that might come in the way of all these chances and opportunities, not in Egypt, but as for the bloc in general at large because the whole world is going into an economic crisis because of military confrontations in some spots uh, worldwide for example Russia and Ukraine and also because of uh, uh, f former pandemics and upcoming pandemic and uh, you know uh, other happenings I mean other crises probably the climate change crisis and uh, hurricanes somewhere else and everything. So uh, what exactly are the main challenges that are facing uh, this block for the current uh, uh, situation or in the current time or for the momentum? And how do you think they could be overcoming? I mean, what could be the, the chance for a possible opportunity amidst all the uh, crises and challenges that are facing uh, the, uh, several blocks like that everywhere. You know, the philosophy of the block is to break the unipolar system, which is controlled by the West and the United States, okay. and to create a bipolar system, uh, of course, with the presence of Russia and China, which are considered mega political and economic power. Russia and China is a member of security the big five in the Security Council. Uh, so, I mean, uh, economic, uh, political problem, of course, uh, like the war in Ukraine, which uh, the BRICS have tried to distance itself a little bit from uh, giving clear-cut position uh, concerning this crisis, but always the BRICS were hoping that uh, you will have, for such crisis, the best way is to solve it diplomatically and to try to end to try to um, to end this war, which 
is uh, the third world is a victim of this war during that because Russia and Ukraine are producing nearly uh, more than 35 percent of the whole grain and wheat. Uh, and after this war, the prices of such commodity have soared. So who is paying the price? The third world and uh, some member of the BRICS, like us, for instance. Egypt has paid a heavy uh, bill for um, the hike of uh, the grain prices because we are uh, considered one of the biggest importers of grain in the world. Uh, so, and there is def definitely other challenges, like, uh, for instance, global chain, uh, global warming. Uh, Brazil is, uh, is housing the biggest forest in the world, the, in, in, in the basin of the Amazon. And uh, so it's a key player in... Uh, in global decision concerning environment, especially the first uh, very, very important summit related to the environment was in Rio de Janeiro uh, two decades, decades ago. <clears throat> okay. And especially uh, uh, the, the Brits too is trying to uh, break the monopoly of the usage of the dollar in international trade to create another viable currency Another uh, currency which would be a, a, a currency of exchange between the member of the BRICS and other member of the Third World too. It will encourage this concept. Uh, right. Uh, 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 finally, uh, Sir, uh, Your Excellency, there was an earlier meeting uh, for the bloc. What uh, was stopping uh, their agenda? Uh, the the meeting in G you you mean the in Johannesburg meeting right? Uh, well, the Johannesburg meeting uh, it was uh, a very very crucial meeting. As I said, they had this John famous Johannesburg uh, declaration, and I think the most important decision and historical they made is to enlarge the group uh, because the, before that the group was. Uh, only an uh, exclusive group of five members which are technologically ad uh, advanced, but they have uh, chosen to invite more diversified economy like Saudi Arabia, for instance, and uh, United Arab Emirates, which had an economy based on the oil and gas revenues, uh, uh, Iran, and e Egypt, which are very, very diversified and very challenging economy and have a very gross rates. And um, Argentina, which is uh, mainly an agricultural economy. Right. Because they are the, one of the biggest producers of meats and oil and, uh, and cereals. And they have uh, a very good industrial base. Right. So um, that this decision was a very, very important and the most important route of Johannesburg Declaration. Right. On that note, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Ayman Musharrafa, uh, you, you are a former assistant foreign minister. would like to thank you, sir, and you have a good day. And we're going to go to take a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show, so stay with us.